Hello, hello. Let's do another formal proof. Uh, so if you look right here, this is a little more involved than the ones we've been doing previously, or at least much more involved than our previous example, which took only two steps. Um, so let's start off by looking at what our premises are. We've got an implication right here and a, a free variable right here. And a free variable, remember, is a variable that is not bound to any quantifiers. So this has to stay as an A. We can't really substitute anything in for that. We could substitute an X with another A, but this A has to stay the same. So we've got an implication of a quantifier, a universal quantifier, another, uh, and then a, a mutual implication. We've got right here M a and not MB, and we're trying to prove not NA. So if you kind of look at this, it may look a little confusing at first, but uh, being the formal logic professionals that we are at this point, um, or experts, uh, complicated problems start to make sense once you break them down just a little bit. And it seems that we're trying to prove our um, precondition for this conditional uh, is false. So kind of when you look at this, you might say, well, we got to do either a deduction or a contradiction. And since this NA leads to this whole thing, I'm thinking we want to prove the contradiction or try to contradict this and see what we get. So we're going to start off assuming NA because, again, we're trying to prove not NA. So let's go ahead and just assume this or you may want to spell that right. Uh, we're assuming this for contradiction because if we assume the opposite of our conclusion and we don't get a contradiction, then our conclusion is kind of bogus. We can't really prove it. Um, so NA, we've got that. That implies this whole guy. And I'm going to go ahead and copy it down again just for clarity. So MX, mutual implication, MA. And that's going to be a modus ponens between let's see, line one and four. Then from there, let's go ahead and instantiate or eliminate. And now we know not MB and um, we know MA. This looks like a prime candidate for a contradiction because if we can prove MB from this assumption, we can prove our conclusion. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say MB shares mutual implication with MA. And that's just going to be universal elimination of line 5, B for X. And now we can go ahead and say MB because of biconditional elimination. And that's going to be lines 2 and 6. So we know MA, so we get MB. But now we can say MB and not MB. That's a conjunction or an adjunction, whichever one you want to use, of uh, 3 and 7. And this is obviously a contradiction. It's a contradiction introduction on line 8. So now we can exit that subproof and we can say not an A because of contradiction elimination from lines four through nine. And remember for contradiction elimination, if we assumed for a contradiction, that's where our subproof starts. We go until we get that contradiction and then we do a contradiction elimination um, and then cite that line range. And that's it. So just to reiterate what we did, we had an implication of a quantifier by a uh, mutual implication, and then we had this information that could give us the opportunity to uh, do a contradiction, or a proof by contradiction. Went through the process, got our contradiction, exited our subproof, and proved the opposite of, uh, or not, um, we proved our conclusion by assuming the opposite and getting a contradiction.